I know that Islam and other faiths reject homosexuality as a, as a mm -hmm. perversion. But how do you counter the, when you talk about the very nature? Mm -hmm. We all know people that are born as children, you see them. That, mm -hmm. Acting feminine in their boys. Right? Yeah. Their Femininity. They uh -huh. make no choice. They just from little, little kids. You can yeah. tell. Femininity is not. Uh, there's. There's nothing. It's. It's not encouraged for a male. But a boon is mentioned in the books of fiqh. A feminine person, somebody who acts effeminate, is mentioned that it's. It's. It's undesirable that he leads the prayer. But there's no. There's no moral stigma there. You are not saying that this person is bad or evil. When that person makes a choice to transgress boundary. Now, see, the thing is here, the idea of, uh, of impulse. You know, I don't, I don't know because I haven't been, you know, I, that's not my experience of the world, right? I've, I've been attracted to the opposite sex. That does not mean that I don't recognize a handsome man if I see them. I think it's, an, it's natural for us to recognize beauty. Right? There's an attraction to, uh, to beautiful people, whether it's a male or a female. I think that's quite normal. The, the, from the Islamic perspective, if there is an impulse, then what is demanded of the individual is that they suppress that. So, for, from the Muslim point of view, if a person does have homosexual uh, impulses or desires, which obviously there are people that have that, the Muslims would say that that is the same as having somebody having an impulse to steal that they like something, they want it, and they desire to steal it, they have to say, no, I will not transgress the boundaries, that there are implications. And the implications, there's an idea within Western culture that, modern Western culture, that as long as I don't harm anybody else, it's okay. From the Muslim point of view, there is a harm when this becomes, when it emerges into the uh, public space. In other words, as far as the Muslims are concerned, what people do behind their closed doors is their own business. That is not my area of judgment. If I see an effeminate man, I should not assume that he's a homosexual by Islamic law. That's, that's not my place. If somebody is openly doing these things, that is what becomes condemned. When there's an open breach. The same with alcohol. Somebody that makes wine in their house and drinks wine. That's between them and God. The minute they step out into the public space, then that is where the Sharia says no. Right? So in terms of Islamic law, what applies to them in this world is only what moves into the public space, not what's in the private space. But in terms of the next world, we believe that God takes people to account for the public and the private space. So that's really the way I think the Muslims would look at it. And the Prophet said that from my community there will be different types of homosexuality. He said there will be homosexuality of the glance, and homosexuality of touch, and then homosexuality of the action. It's in the hadith, yeah. And it's also considered one of the signs of the end of time that, and I'm going to talk about when we get to the end of time, with homosexuality and lesbianism become very prevalent according to the Prophet Muhammad. It is one of the signs of the end of time. And he actually said that men would marry men and women would marry women. That, that is in uh, one of the hadiths.